News 25 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, a person is transported to trauma following a stabbing, and a suspect is arrested after he reportedly tried to break into a home. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local coverage you can count on. And a verbal altercation leads to a reported stabbing. It's Monday, October 28th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. One male has been taken to the hospital after he was reportedly stabbed during an argument. This afternoon, Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, along with Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies, responded to a home this afternoon located at 1320 Bruce Street here in Pahrump for a report of a stabbing. The individual, they say, was stabbed approximately three times with a box cutter, according to medics. The suspect fled the scene in a white pickup truck and was located at a home on Blackhorn Street. The victim was transported to Desert View Hospital's helipad, where he was airlifted via Mercy Air to a trauma center in Las Vegas. The suspect in this case was arrested by Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. And in the early morning hours on Saturday, police were dispatched to a call that involved a subject who had possibly been shot trying to enter a residence. The Nye County Sheriff's Office arrested one individual and is conducting an investigation to a home invasion call that occurred over the weekend on Buckhorn Street off Betty Avenue. A couple had reported to police that an intruder was at the home and that they had shot through the door and possibly struck the individual. The suspect attempted to enter the house through the front door. The Nye County Sheriff's Office tells News 25 that the individual was not struck by any of the bullets. They say that the the man ran to Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue Station 1 on Highway 160 and attempted to break into several vehicles before fighting with a firefighter. Officers arrived on scene and arrested that individual. And firefighters halted flames that were in the walls of an apartment complex near Bourbon Street. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies responded with Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue last night for a report of a structure fire at an apartment complex on Potro Avenue here in Pahrump. Firefighters quickly brought the fire under control with no further extensions. No injuries have been reported. Well, let's go to Angela, who brings us the latest in your business news. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Topping our news, an out-of-this-world stock is scheduled to begin trading today. Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Space Tourism Company will list directly on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol SPCE. Six tourists can go at a time. More than 600 people are in the queue to take that trip to outer space. They will pay $250,000 each. Fallout from Amazon's third quarter earnings miss is hitting investors and the CEO's wallet. The stock tumbled during Friday's trading session, wiping out around $40 billion in market cap. And for Jeff Bezos, that's about a $7 billion hit. According to Forbes, Bezos has lost his title as the world's richest man. It goes back to Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks, Angela. After this break, we'll give you the latest of what happened in our courtrooms this morning. This segment of the news is brought to you by Pahrump Cardiology, located at 1397 South Loop Road in Pahrump, Nevada. Call 775-210-8333 for an appointment. Dr. Tali Eric, proudly serving Pahrump since 2005.
Well, defendant Cole Ingleson voiced his displeasure once again regarding his public defender in his upcoming trial for the murder of Eusenia Camp, who was just three years old when she died at a home on Gamebird Road in 2017. Today, the court was preparing for the upcoming trial in December. Ingleson has declined all plea deals offered by the district attorney's office. Cole Ingleson was in court today to set a date for jury selection in his upcoming trial. The man has been charged with felony child abuse involving the death of three-year-old Eusenia Camp, who died as a result of blunt force trauma, according to the Clark County Coroner on July 15, 2017. Camp was in the care and custody of Ingleson at the time as her mother was at work. Ingleson was said to be the mother's boyfriend at the time. Today, Cole once again told the court that he could not work with his attorney that had been provided to him by the court. The judge heard that argument during the last court hearing and ruled that the attorney was doing all that he could for the defendant in this case. I need time to put in for a writ of mandamus because I can't move forward with this man. Our trust has been violated mm -hmm. enough, so I'm going to need an enlargement of time to approach the upper court in this matter. The defendant, according to the attorney, is not cooperating or assisting with his defense. The district attorney, Kirk Vitto, commented today that there is no further plea deals being offered to Ingleson in this case. The jury selection will begin soon for the trial, which is set for December 3rd through the 6th and the afternoon of the 9th. We'll declare ready and we'll draw the jury on Friday. And Mr. Percival, you'll contact Louise and you'll say, uh, the experts are ready, we're ready to go for the trial by Friday, or the experts can't make it, and then we'll bump it to a new date. Well, the anticipated sentencing for a man who has decided to plead guilty to animal abuse and neglect resulting in the deaths of several of his pets who died from starvation occurred today in the courtroom. Gregory Kikorian was in court this morning in front of Judge Robert Lane. The senior citizen is charged with animal neglect and cruelty after his second arrest on the matter concerning his numerous pets, which include cats, dogs, birds, goats, chickens, and more, that were at a home on Pahrump Valley Boulevard. It's like I have my dog, and it's my duty to make sure he's taken care of, but you know, I live with my girlfriend, and I trust that she's watching him today while I'm here. That's what was going on. His wife was living at the house, she was more than capable to call him. She, you know, she had a cell phone. He'd stop and see her at least once a month, see what was going on, as well as there was things going on that um, her family members were checking in on her. Now, in PSI report, it says that back in March of 2018 that there was a check at the house. All the animals were fine. There was animals inside and out. Um, Mr. Corian uh, would provide the care for the animals. Uh, outside while his wife and her stepson were providing for inside. The court sentenced him today to 12 to 30 months for the charge after several animals were found inside the home with his deceased wife. The court said today that it appeared that the female and animals had been dead for approximately two weeks when the Nye County Sheriff's Office conducted a welfare check on the woman at a request from a family member. Uh, apparently she was in the house with the animals and she died in the house and then somebody went and did a wellness check. Right. And I was wondering if she was deceased for four hours or four days or a month. I would say, we don't know for sure, it's speculative, but I would say at least a couple of weeks. Correct, Your Honor. Yes. And during that couple of weeks, he was still caring for the animals outside every day. Correct. And they were all fine. Yes, Your Honor. The animals inside, he didn't know, he did not see, he didn't check. Kokorian said that he and his wife were separated at the time and he was leaving the inside animal care up to her while he was taking care of the animals on the outside of the home. The court commented. So there's times where he would talk you know, uh, I mean, so I, today or yeah. a week would go by, yeah. two weeks? I don't, uh, no, the, about the time when they say, according to the definite, definite, mm -hmm. just how many times are you talking to her? That's all you know. Uh, all kinds. I don't know, but, uh, dozens there, of times. Was there times where you would go talk to her at a month ago? Have you ever talked to her? No, never a month. Okay. 
today that he had up to 200 animals at one point on the property. Kikorian is a gambler who had been staying in comped rooms at the Pahrump Nugget during this time and said in court that he also had a girlfriend who was currently caring for the animals since his arrest in March of this year. Judge Robert Lane commented that Kikorian will be able to have animals once again after he completes his prison time. Well, I know I didn't win the $10,000. Sunday's giveaway at the Prump Nugget is the biggest fundraiser of the year for the Prump Valley Rotary Club. We caught up with Janet Wolfhill to get the details. This is the, um, ca the cash extravaganza of the Prump Valley Rotary Club. And every year we get together and we uh, charge money and we raise money to uh, do different things in the community. We in the past have also raised money for the 4 H Club, which we are so, so grateful for doing much better now. Um, we send four, four uh, high school students and two eighth grade students to Rotary Camp each year. Um, and they really come back inspired to do good and do well for others. As you know, the um, Rotary Anthem is service above self. And we try to do that here and bring a little bit of the wonderfulness that we can to the people of Pahrump. We love our community. We have a one in 400 chance of winning $10,000. And then this year we added the uh, television and the um, grill as a second and third prize. Another thing we're doing different this year is we have door prizes. Every, when everybody came in, they got a little ticket, and that ticket told them that they could um, have a, a, a chance at a door prize. So those are the drawings that they're doing right now. We really enjoy doing that. The Rotarians themselves really enjoy doing it. We're not sure we're going to do it this year because we have had some wonderful, um, not wonderful for the people, but wonderful for us to be able to help. Um, requests to do other things. So we're kind of thinking of mixing it up a little bit this yeah. year. Well, we had some set table for uh, 200, and it looks like there's one empty table. Yeah. <laughs> and then lots of giveaways, right? And lots of those uh, silent ra raffle items or auction items. All those were donated by the uh, generous members of the Pahrump community. Mm -hmm. And um, the, we, ha we had some gift certificates, uh, as you probably heard, from Master Tech Computers and um, other places, um, Gunny, Gunny uh, offered a service and um, sir, Fitness for 10 donated two um, certificates for um, a year's membership. You have Ski Sensky um, helping out there? Yes, so we enjoy his company. He's a real fun guy to have as our MC, and we're very happy to have him. Um, Rotary, Pahrump Rotary meets at um, the China Walk most Tuesdays at noon. The uh, first and fourth Tuesday, most particularly, the second and third, we sometimes have an evening, uh, which was a, a different restaurant each month. But the first and fourth Tuesday, you can usually find us at the China Walk at noon. Congratulations to the $10,000 winners, Dick and Millie Duffin. All right. Congratulations again to the Duffins. We'll, we'll be right back right after this break. This segment of the news is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Nye County's injury attorneys. Don't get bullied by insurance companies. Call Jason Ernest and bully them back at 775-727-9500. Welcome back. Well, Brooklyn Johnston and her grandmother have been working on a special project just in time for Veterans Day. Well, to us, she's the most special granddaughter there is. She's our only one, but she's very creative. She loves to draw in color. And the last year or so, she's been painting a lot of rocks. Mm -hmm. And these rocks are special, right? We think so. They're for veterans. Why did you make rocks for veterans? To say thank you to the veterans. Um, what are you thinking of the veterans for? Um, to be in, our, be in the military or the army. Yeah, and for their service? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you made these rocks, and what are you going to do with them? We're going to hide them at the veterans clinic. The veterans can take them home or rehide them if they wish. And you've made other rocks? Yes. Have you been placing those around town too? Yeah. Like uh, the rocks that we've been seeing, the yeah. Pahrump rocks, right? Right. Her label will have the Pahrump rocks on it. Brooklyn wants to get 101 done. 
I can see that you are in costume. What do you dress up as? Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn? You love Harley Quinn? Uh, the designs, we thought that they would look pretty. Um, my favorite one is the mustache one. I painted it and I kind of decorated it. I did all of the work on it. So it is my favorite. And that's a tie. Mm -hmm. And why do you like that one? Because it kind of goes, because it goes with the mustache. It's the fist. Why do you like the fist? Because it goes with all the other ones that I showed. You know what, which one I like is this. It's round, and look at that drippy paint on it. That's kind of nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Tell me about making that one. Well, all we did was we poured paint, and then we poured different colors of paint, and then we just dried, waited until it dried, then we put the detail on. All right, so you're going to be um, distributing these at the Veterans Clinic around uh, their, their area, right there on Little Lane. Hopefully the veterans will pick them up, take it home, and know that uh, Brooklyn put her heart and soul into these, just like the veterans do for all the service that they've given back to our country, right? Mm -hmm. Very cute. We've known uh, Brooklyn for many years. She's now seven. Well, today we introduce you to a dog named Gully, who's available right now at our local shelter. Today's Save-A-Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Goli. Goli is a St. Bernard mix. He's actually a medium-sized dog. He does not have the height of a St. Bernard. He used to have long hair, but covered in foxtails and severe matting. Thankfully, Dr. Thomas went and shaved them all down, and Goli is a senior dog. He's about six or seven years old, which makes him available for the Senior to Senior program. So the Senior to Senior program is if a senior citizen in our community would like to adopt a dog, they can adopt a senior dog completely free of charge. Goli is also available for adoption for free for veterans in our community. So we come on down, come and visit him. He is so sweet. There on Siri Lane behind the Nye County Courthouse. You can give them a call at 775-751-7020. You can look them up on Facebook at Desert Haven Animal Society or go on to line at deserthavenas.org. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right. We want to thank Darby, and that's your mom, isn't it? This is Bradley, as you guys know. He is the salesperson at Quality Signs. He was in the Baby Days Parade with us this weekend with Willie as well, and he wants to thank Mountain West Lawyers for sponsoring Save a Pet. We're going to take a look outside, huh, Bradley? See what it looks like out there? All right, it's beautiful. We're going to find out what we have in store for the week right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's weather. In Las Vegas, we saw a high of 60 degrees, the low of 37. In Death Valley, 71, their low of 44 degrees. 61 with the low of 32 in Amargosa. Down to 58 with the low of 29 in Beatty. 51, 21 in Goldfield. 48, 24 in Tonopah. 60, 26 in Carson City. 53, 23 in Fallon. And finally, Fernley with a high of 55 and their low at 27 degrees. Now today in Pahrump, we saw some nice sunny skies. Our high today was 59 degrees, so it was a little bit chilly today. Winds coming out of the south-southwest at 5 miles per hour. Our humidity at 10% and our sunrise at 7.02 this morning. Now looking at tonight, we're expecting some clear skies. Our low tonight is going to be 35 degrees. It's currently 57 outside right now. Winds coming out of the east at 5 miles per hour, 14% for our humidity. And our sunset at 5.52 tonight. Now looking into our 7-day, we are expecting some nice sunny skies all through next Sunday, and on Monday we are having some clouds rolling in. On Tuesday, tomorrow, we are expecting some high winds coming out of the north-northwest at 23 miles per hour, so please be aware of any loose items that may be hanging around your yard. They might sail away tomorrow. 
Now looking at our temperatures, on Tuesday we're going to be seeing a high of 67 degrees. On Wednesday we're going to drop down to 55 and back up to 63 on Thursday. Then from Friday through next Monday we're going to go up even more into those low 70s, just hanging around 70 through 74 degrees next Friday through Monday. Now our overnight temperatures are also starting a steady increase. On Tuesday we're going to be seeing a low of 30 degrees, work our way up to 35 on Thursday. We're going to be into those low 40s by this Friday at 43 degrees and we're going to slowly climb that ladder back up to 47 degrees by next Monday. So we're getting to just a small little cold front coming in and then it looks like our temperatures are going to start climbing back up again. So now with that, we're going to throw it back to the desk with Deanna. Thanks, Michael. We got that daylight savings time ending uh, this uh, Saturday night. Everybody's got to set their clocks back. Remember that. And then uh, once again, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us here at KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio 103.1 FM. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.